University of Hansraj College, MIT Meerut, IIH MR University, BMU, and Terry jointly welcomes you to the webinar titled Building the Path Towards Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I am Dr. Jaya Malhotra from Department of Zoology, Hansraj College. We are delighted to have Dr. Mrityunjay Saur, Director General, RND KIIT University, Bhuvneshwar, and CEO of TBI KIIT. We also welcome Dr. Muthu Singaram, CEO of MedTech Incubator HTIC from IIT Madras. There's also a panel discussion by Mr. Shanta Kumar, who is the co-founder of Cornerstone Devices Private Limited, and Mr. Palani Appam, the co-founder of Mokero Health Solution Private Limited. We welcome and thank all of you for coming together on this platform. We also have with us Ms. Alka Kakkar, Vice Principal of Hansraj College, who is also the Vice President of IIC Hansraj College. Along with her is Dr. Archana Singh from Department of Botany, the convener of IIC Hansraj College. But before we start, there is a set of instructions for our dear participants. You will be shared with an attendance come feedback form link after the first session in the chat box, and it is mandatory to fill. Please write your query or questions from, for the speaker in the Q&A section. We would be taking them up after the talk. Now I invite Dr. Madhavi Moni from Department of Economics, Hansraj College, who is also the Startup Activity Coordinator from IIC Hansraj College to introduce our first speaker of the session, Dr. Mithun Jasor. Ma'am, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jaya. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. I welcome you all to this webinar session on building the path towards innovation and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship has uh, become the central point of the economy with the number of unicorns increasing. The nation is ripe to hone the entrepreneurial skills of the youth. There is a need to bring together some of the best minds to create the ecosystem for nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit. So to throw some light on that and impart knowledge on innovation and entrepreneurship, we have with us today, Dr. Mrityun Jaiswar, Director General, R&D, KIIT University, Bhubaneswar, and CEO, Technology Business Incubator, KIIT. He is an entrepreneurial professor with PhD in Molecular Microbiology from University of Delhi, trained as postdoc at ETH Zurich, Switzerland. Dr. Mrityunjay is instrumental in establishing School of Biotechnology in 2007 at KIIT University, which indeed was awarded as the Center of Excellence by Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. He also established KIIT TBI with the objective of promoting deep tech startup companies. Under his leadership, TBI has nurtured more than 260 startup companies in the last decade and created 4,000 plus jobs and established center of excellence in incubation in the areas of digital health, diagnostics, and precision agriculture. Dr. Mrityunjay is a passionate mentor and has handholded many deep tech startups companies from ideation to enterprise creation. It is expanding its wings in the east and northeastern parts of India and is helping institutions establish promising incubation centers. Dr. Mithinje, it is a pleasure to have you with us today, and we all are looking forward to your address. May I now request you to take over, sir? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, everybody, for inviting me to this uh, platform. I see, I think Muthu has not joined. Uh, Muthu is a good friend of mine. And I think uh, Mr. Santa Kumar, probably from the company side, I welcome all of you to this. Um, what you call the talk. So my talk will be uh, based on, I didn't know that who were the participants. I thought I'll be talking to students and faculty. They are interested uh, to learn how to ideate. How can you take the ideas to the next level of creating proof of concept and then maybe the enterprise, right? So good to hear from the college faculties talking about unicorns, talking about <laughs> all these things. So I'm really excited to uh, see that there will be better outcome after my talk. So am I allowed to put my PPT on? Yes, I think so. So in next 45 minutes, how much time I have, Achina ma'am? Sir, yeah. uh, 45 minutes to one hour. Perfect, yeah. 45 minutes, not one hour is too boring for others. So let's uh, talk about it. I'll give you my experience at the end that what you have done in 10 years, but let's start with how can we, how can you build the path towards innovation entrepreneurs? Having said that, the whole country is now, whole world is talking about startups, 
invest india now startup india different agencies putting money in startups incubator technology business incubator business incubator everywhere including colleges opening up incubator now you as a beneficiaries or a student or a young mind or a innovator must leverage the platform so today my talk is where you are today and when you'll be tomorrow if you really build a path for yourself so i have seen innovators building up things and they fail they don't fail but they don't succeed in the platform they will be building it up and i feel knowingly they are failing because it's not a structured path they have created so today i am very fortunate i am sitting in a university called kit university man it is not k w i t it's a kit university where we built up a structured process a structured platform which takes care of if you come with idea if you come with proof of concept if you come with mvp we can really work with you so let's talk about where you are today now i see all of you most of you except few most of you in this sector of promoting academia research and knowledge creation because your faculties you are student you are learning and faculties providing knowledge but then today my talk is beyond that so i'm not going to give you a classroom based talk but more towards how practically you can take some of your exciting ideas into new product new process new service and if at all everything goes well and you build the right kind of team and the right strategies you never know some of you might build enterprise even i'll give you examples case studies in our incubator how ideas became now company of 8000 9000 crores companies so this one slide is going to give you a lot of clarity that where you are today and how can you build yourself for next couple of years now today you are in the institutions you are in hansdal's college you might be in delhi university but you are promoting more of a classrooms research and knowledge creation now next if you have to build your path towards innovations you need to understand that i need to build my ideas in such a way of course everybody gets ideas but the ideas which gets into commercialized stage it goes through a process of refinement process of validation process of experimentation and process of developments so i feel many of us even i have been nurturing startups many of us we forget the importance of importance of intellectual property so it means when you get an idea you must look for can i file an ip in future so for that we we'll go for a fto analysis that's called freedom to operate i'm just giving those words because like ma'am mentioned about the unicorn similarly in start of world you have to really get through these words and you must understand what fto means freedom to operate if i get an idea somebody you know yesterday somebody was talking uh, to indian navy and he said my idea is noble and indian navy said no this you have been using but we have never told you because this is confidential it means you must analyze how your idea is noble for that google is not sufficient there is something beyond google there are different you know platforms through which you can do the fto analysis done this very very important before you take up the journey of creating proof of concept and many people many people like you and me we fail in those things we always talk about our ideas our technology with a lot of enthusiasm so dear participants please remember all of you must go through during your programs of any academics or research the what the ip means and how can you evaluate the ip or how can you find out whether my idea is noble or not through a ft analysis report such now once you find your idea is good then what is next so many students they complain many faculty they complain oh i don't have any support to build something out of my ideas i have exciting ideas you know i can make why to take golgoppa with you know the hand which is getting into water in a Uh, the golgopa water i'll make a robotics platform but then you need to have an understanding of if i build you know if i get some idea how do i convert it so what we call that bring the design perspective of it how it should look like how it should you know uh, operate so for that people talk about new designs so in your ideas you know, if your mind you have to bring the concept of designs perspective and then once you have a right design which is of course not a one day job it has got you know gone through a lot of consultation kind of thing and you build your prototype so once you build your prototype and you start doing experiments on that validating those things that's what we call the proof of concept 
So remember, dear participants, you are in academia research knowledge creation. You need to go to the next concept called proof of concept for which the lot of support is available by the government of India agencies, which I'll just run through in next couple of minutes. So once you build a proof of concept, again, never stops there because I know uh, it has to go to the next level of validations, creating the minimum viable product and then commercialized plan, what we call the go-to-market strategies. Now remember, if you are science-based, there are different verticals of science and technology, you need to understand once you build a proof of concept, people always say, oh, I have been to the investors, they are trying to invest money on me. Never it happens just like that because proof of concept is the beginning of a thought process of creating enterprise, but you are not enterprise at all. You have only built a proof of concept, which says, if you at all, you think like this, the idea you have got, it might work, but it has never said it is possible, it is feasible commercially and in, in the market, it will be viable. So there are two options in front of you. When you really build ideas, ideas goes to proof of concepts through intellectual property, through designs, prototyping. Once you build a proof of concepts, some of you can think, oh, I cannot build an enterprise because it's too much for me. I cannot build a team. I cannot really build such a big infrastructure or big business plan. I can do tech transfer. Remember, many of the faculties or the innovators, their business plan is tech transfer, not enterprise creation. There is no harm in it. Many places, the big companies buy out the technology from small companies or innovators or labs. There's also a good business plan. So there are two options for you at the moment, but there are more options, but because of your students, I'm just telling you, either you can think of a startup, which I'll be you know, hoping for it, that some of you might come up and see that your ideas gets into proof of concepts and gets into startups mode. But then many of you can really transfer technology. So being a faculty, being a promoter of startup, I also transferred two technology to two companies and got good revenue money out of it. Now, once you build this, your startup, your, or you, you know, go for tech transfer, once you build your startup, then you go for different strategies. So what we call clinical trials, if that is at all required by the product, regulatory compliances, certification, many things are required to validate what you are claiming for it. So in this startup world, you, know, you should not you know, take me otherwise, but many times out of enthusiasm, we talk about our technology, our innovations, we forget about our compliances. And I have seen startups suffering in the compliances vertical, compliances areas. So remember, once you build a proof of concept, build an enterprise, it never stops there. It has to go to validation by different sectors. Could be clinical trial, could be certification, could be regulatory, and many more trials, you know, bigger trials. Now, once you prove that and it's validated now, you want to scale it up, you want to really look for money, investments, and to see that how can you go to market and the business plan starts from there and then it comes to scale up. So when you talk to startup or talk to people like you or you talk to me, I always talk about, oh, I have an interesting startup. But when I talk about how much turnover you have is very minimal. So remember, uh, dear participants, I'm talking about an idea which builds proof of concept, which validates and go to the scale up. I'm talking about something is a very big commercial transactions. I'll show you afterwards how students have built ideas and from there how they could build enterprise, which is really big ones. So this is a schematic path for you to understand that how can I build my ideas to next level, the next level, then I could commercialize or I could really go to you know, the scale up operations. So in our thought process, it's not about only ideas, it's from ideas, proof of concept, till the scale up, I call them enterprise creation. It's not about only part of it. So being in this field, I have realized this is quite possible. Many of us, many of you can really do it, but only thing that we have always running after some fixed targets like you, like me, after my bachelor's, I did my you know, master's from Goa, then PhD from you know, Delhi University with Professor Ruplal. Many of you know, I see uh, probably Jaya was there. So um, uh, people are you know, doing following such kind of process, you know, path always, most of us. Then you look for a job in institutions, in a university, then maybe in a company. But if some of you have interesting ideas, earlier days, these platforms are missing. But today, I think the whole world, whole country is talking about innovations, startups, and incubation processes. I think you must get in touch with a platform, which I call is incubator, which has really transformed some of the young students' 
ideas into enterprise, which has helped. Of course, they have to drive it, but it has helped at the initial stage, providing a platform which is not just like your classroom or biology or botany or whatever you have been learning, but it's beyond that. And it really takes you to the level of proof of concept creation. And of course, later on, the journey starts from there. Now I'm talking about the ecosystem, which we call a technology business incubator. And there are different terms, synonyms of these TBIs by the Nidhi scheme of DST government of India. Very good amount of funding they've been supporting. You know, I know maybe Hansaraj College also can apply for it. And maybe you can start with the ITBI concept, inclusive TBI for the five plus funding. And Bionest, which is by the BIRAC, there are Bionest incubators in the bio incubator stage. When BIRAC is funding by the DBT government of India, there's a new concept that's come called Technology Enabling Center at D by DST. And this has been given to the universities. This is also a good funding, around five plus funding to inculcate the innovations component in the students' mindset. The business incubators by the MSME, government of India, the Atal Incubation Centers by NITI-IO, and the defense the Innovations for Defense Excellence Program, IDEX incubated by the Ministry of Defense. Why I'm saying all these things? Because earlier, 10, 12 years back, these platforms were missing in our country. And today it has been really scaled up in the country, 400 plus incubators in the country, which is nurturing startups. So don't wait for it. Bring out your ideas. Of course, many of you will go for the job, higher studies, but some of you might think differently today and see that some of your ideas goes through a process of you know prototyping proof of concepts validation and then business mind you know commercials uh, setup now what is an incubator because even though there are 400 incubators but i cannot take the name of more than 20 incubators in the country because others have taken them as a project and this is something a different ecosystem i have been going to many institutions in green delhi university into your institution you have to understand that Incubator is not a classroom, it's not a laboratory, it's an ecosystem. There's no physical boundary in this. It's an ecosystem which cannot work in isolation. There is strong science, strong technology, the practice of product development, validations, IP support, design thinking, regulatory, market research, monitoring, you know, mentoring, social impact, capacity. Just see, this is itself is a more than a university's concept. It brings technology, science, business, marketing, PR, branding, investments, whatnot. So it's, it's a holistic approach of taking ideas into enterprise. So this is important and this TBI cannot be a project. We need a new mindset, we need a new culture, new process. I mean that rather all of you going towards jobs or higher studies only and PhD and then a faculty job, some of you start thinking, can I work with some of my mentors in Hansdal's college or maybe nearby university or institutions? And can today maybe Muthu Singhanam is there, the others also there, can talk to them and take some of my ideas into next level. So you need to come up, need to have a new mindset, new culture, new process. So when I did my PhD at Delhi University, I went to postdoc, you know, Delhi in Switzerland for a postdoc, came back, became a director, established, I could have really taken just like a director, but you know, I have my two own companies. I'm into tech transfers, nurturing, mentoring. Why I'm saying that do not, for faculties also, do not confine yourself only publications. Even I'm highly rated published. I'm every year I'm publishing 50 articles, good ones in international journals. But you have to think that you need to bring a new mindset, new culture, new process. That's quite possible in India, quite possible in Hansdal's College. I'm just trying to, pitch that today, how it is possible. Look at earlier, money was a problem. Today I can claim, I can vouch for it. India has so much of money to support startups, institutions to build incubator, huge amount of money. I am sitting in Bhubaneswar in a university, I could raise a really big amount of money for incubator, for startups. You'll see that afterwards. Now, if you have ideas, the government has brought so much of schemes, even I'm confused sometimes why there are so many schemes from ideations to scale up. Today, all of you might go for, many of you might go for GRF, fellowships, CSR, DBT and all. Look, fellowships for PhD program, they're fellowships, more than 500 per year. We call Entrepreneurs in Residence Fellowship Program. It starts with ideation. Look, you cannot complain now, I don't have any support to take my ideas to next level. The fellowships which can provide you monthly 30,000 rupees per month to 50,000 rupees per month. And then the journey starts. So this 
uh, slides tells you if you come with a good ideas, which is you know go through a process of validation. If you really it goes to next level, your idea can go to the next level of scale up through different government of India funding schemes, which was not happening, you know, maybe a decade back. This is happening today in a very aggressive way in the whole country. Look, one invest, you know, one organization is called Bida, which is very very famous for it promoting biotech startups. I thought many of you, all of you, are science students. Biotech startups, it provides you so many things. There are schemes to build, you know, provide you funding, capacity building, incubation. So a lot of many things are available there. But there's a scheme called Sitare scheme. I mean, it's good for all of you. If you get through, you get 15 lakhs of rupees. Remember, faculty is not getting 15 lakhs of rupees. So students come forward, having interesting ideas, you can get the Sitare and you can get 15 lakhs of rupees. Fellowships grant, big grant, Sibri grant. So I just see, I'm giving you a letter. Showing you a letter, if your idea is good, it starts with simple fellowships, can go to a bigger fund, which we call the S funding. Now, for this, there's a platform called Bionest Institute by Biodac, which also we are part of it. And it is promoting students' ideas, faculty's ideas, converting them into or helping them to make build enterprises. Now, I'll give you very simple examples of how these centers can support you. You're in a very early stage of ideas and stage. You provide ideas to the centers and they can really help you through different schemes. Today, I'm very proudly says many of my students from School of Biotech, they're getting into startup creation and some of them are really, really successful. multi cross standard company with MSc degrees. The SIP program, many of you please look out, there are, I think more than 14, 15 centers in the country which is promoting SIP fellowship called Social Innovation Immersion Fellowship Program, which is by Bayrak. And if you, there are different thematics like waste to well, food and nutrition, different kind of thematics. If you apply, if you get selected, you know, for 18 months, you get 50,000 rupees per month as a fellowship. Plus you get a five lakhs rupees of kickstart grant or a grant to spend on your ideas. Imagine this is such a wonderful opportunity. You can really say some of you, those who are not only for PhD program, Think about it. You can take some of your ideas to the next level, which is through the SIP fellowship program. And the fellowship is 50,000 rupees per month and one time grant of five lakhs of rupees. Many of my students have really taken this and really built their enterprise. There's a program called the Sitari program, which is to promote and encourage young students for you know, translation research. And for that, every year they have been giving by the called Sitari Gyati Award, 15 awards, each 15 lakhs. And you can be a postgraduate, you can be doctoral students to take up this project and you can really get this money. So what I'm trying to tell you that funding is not a problem. It's all about how do you build your ideas? How do you build your path to take the ideas through a structured process of IP, designs, prototyping, validations, proof of concept, all the sectors. Now, because many people, they don't still in the country, which is doing quite well in startup incubation area, but still many students, they don't know about this fellowship program. I'm sure many of you don't know about you know, uh, today itself. So EIR is a very you know, program by the DST government of India. And uh, if you get selected in the country, there are almost more than 500 fellowships. They always, you know, they've been you know, providing these fellowships every year, 500 fellowships. If you get selected, you get 30,000 rupees per month. So I'm just giving you the support schemes available to take your ideas. How can you work with your ideas through fellowship programs to understand, to refine your ideas, to try to build part of the prototypes. So for that, government is going to give you fellowships, which was not happening in earlier days. Now there are schemes available to build prototypes. Also, this is very important because idea is important, but then you have to build your proof of concept. So there you also get a lot of support from government of India. There's also a scheme called the Bayrak Big Program, which is very, very, you know, prolific, very aggressive program where many of the companies got emerged out of biotech, you know, incubators. And this is a, just to tell you that every year, government of India through Bayrak gives you around more than 100, 120 startup companies, each getting 50, 000, 50 lakhs of rupees. Now imagine a student having a master's degree also, B.Tech degree also can get it. We have students example with B.Tech degree have got big grant of 50 lakhs of rupees. Remember, as I said earlier, funding is never an issue. Funding is enough available. So this, who can apply? Anybody, students, academicians, scientists, clinicians, researchers. 
So only my submission there, rather than complaining, things are not happening, things are not existing. I see sitting in Bhubaneswar, so much of things we have, only we have to take it up, we have to digest it, and you have to take it further. So, you know, even the big 20 call is now open, and uh, the last day is now 25th of February, got extended, so it's, I think, uh, tomorrow, uh, or day after tomorrow. And it, this can be done in many areas, agriculture, drugs, medical device, waste management, many sectors, which is linked to life science and biotechnology. Remember, even students can get these projects of 50 lakhs of rupees, and the money comes to your own account. You can sign your check, of course, not to buy vehicles or to buy house, but to spend on your projects. Similarly, also you have got uh, the Prayas uh, grant, which is also very, very uh, uh, good by the DST uh, program. Prayas, you to get selected by the Nidhi scheme by different centers, you can get around 10 lakhs of rupees for the prototyping, which is also very interesting. You'll see that some of our startups from students' mind, they came with ideas, took this Prayas grant of seven, 10 lakhs rupees, they built something, got 50 lakhs, then the follow-on funding starts. Similarly, we have also got the other program called Tide 2.0 Investment, uh, the uh, prototyping grant program. Also there you get, if you get selected, you get seven lakhs of rupees. And then you go to the next stage of commercialization stage where never it stops at a proof of concept. It goes to next level, which we call the commercialization stage. This is the most crucial phase of startup because if you don't get into market, you know, your product remains as a product for your laboratories, for your you know, company, not for the market. For that, government has come up with a lot of schemes. The one most promising scheme is Sibri scheme. Of course, funding is limited, but still people have used it and they have used it very structurally and go to the next level. We have, here also you can get grant and uh, what do you call the soft loan basis kind of thing, investment funding. Similarly, you've got a BIP program. I'm just running through these slides just to tell you that funding by the government for startups is not a problem. This is just with BIRAC, I'm telling BIRAC, SIBRI and BIP, that many agencies have similar kind of funding, which you can leverage once you build your ideas into enterprise level. Similarly, you have got the other funds, which is you know, very, very interesting, which you also can get it. And um, you know the LIB fund, the SEED fund, all kind of funding, the BIRAC LIB fund is very, very interesting, where you also you can get you know, uh, a crore kind of rupees if you're really doing good. Uh, your prototype is good, your validation is quite good, you are going towards the market, this can be also leveraged. Look, multi cross funding coming to you, which was not happening earlier. So if you really want to build your path towards innovation and entrepreneurship, you should have, you know, what you call information about all these enabling factors, financial resources, then once you get it, who will be your mentors, who will be your team, all things will come into picture in due course of time. So my submission to all of you that do not worry about money part of it, build your ideas, refine it, build your team, build your strategy, build what you call the strength in your project, the innovations component, and definitely once you start pitching to people, to different agencies, they will start funding. So there are other funding by, you know, I, I don't want to tell you, but I'll tell you now very quickly that, you know, leveraging this kind of fund, how we could build our incubation ecosystem, which has nurtured more than 260 odd startup companies, which will be very, very exciting for you. So let's talk about uh, who am I, how I can come from this incubation ecosystem, what we have been doing so far today. Now, technology business incubator, I said, it cannot be a laboratory just like that. It is an ecosystem. So if I go to my school of biotech, I have a different setup where I have to speak science and technology language. And in Kitty Bay, I have to talk about more commercial language, investment language. So look at this slide, which will tell you a lot of things. As an incubator, we started in 2009 with little support from DST government of India. I remember around three crores of rupees, just, okay, something will happen there. 2009 and today, 2022, you will see the graph, what we have leveraged. Almost all Indian agencies have funded us. It has really you know, got so much of support starting from DST, MSME, BIDA, Tide of Meiti, you know, everyone, you carry your you know, European Union, everyone has supported us, including we got the best TB of the country award in 2017 and the center of excellence in incubation. Why I'm saying, because institutions can build up platform, we should create the next innocent companies. So we try to build this incubation center in our university in such a way that this should be much more conducive 
not bureaucratic, but more enterprising culture. Once you come to us, you'll see that how enterprising the whole ecosystem is. There are fellow states, there are fellows, there are prototypes, there are proof of concept, there are MVP, there are investors, there are mentors, regulatory compliance, clinical trial, everybody's sitting here. Even I'm thinking now to put up CDSU people also nearby. See that, can you build a manufacturing hub of our inclusion ecosystem? Everything is possible at the moment in the whole country because the, there is a lot of vibrancy in startup, innovations and incubations. I'll be suggesting you to take advantage of it. Look at this graph, a incubation center started in 2009 in institutions in Kit in Bhubaneswar in Odisha has really reached up to this level. Funding is not a problem. I think in the last 10 years, we could have raised for our starters for incubator more than 250 crores of rupees or 300 crores of rupees. Look at the facilities, which is so you know encouraging, interesting for startup. They feel like working. They say 24 seven open department or the facilities where you can come, they can work, they can prototype, they can visualize, they can experiment, they can go back, they can go to hospital, do things, come back, go to field, do things, come back. This is what the whole ideas I'm talking about. How do you build a structured process, structured platform, which promotes ideas into enterprises. Now, as all of you are thinking what to be done next, if some of you, one of you, two of you has interesting ideas, don't stop it there. Don't think somebody will you know, lose it. If somebody will take it from me. I'll do it after I become 45 years old. Never do like that. Because today your ideas is good, tomorrow it may not be good because somebody has done it, something on that. So please don't you know, hide your ideas, talk to your mentors, teachers, whoever you feel you trust and start working on those ideas and build your group of concepts if at all you are interested in. So as I said earlier, so much of funding available in the government's agencies to incubators, to incubators and startups, look at, we have leveraged those fundings and created this kind of, you know, vibrancy in the whole kit TBI ecosystems. We have been now running, interestingly, you know, with the Jaljivan Mission Board, we are running, you know, we are mentoring 10 companies to deploy their technology for looking at drinking water qualities. Just imagine their pure chemistry, pure microbiology. Why don't we build certain interesting devices, which is very point of care or kind of point of the, what do you call the, you know, the place, where you can really detect uh, what kind of uh, problems in the drinking water qualities, and that can be transmitted to the higher levels to rectify it. So this all is possible through science and technology and through innovations, incubation entrepreneurship model. So, and with US Embassy, we're building also some new concepts, how to combat air pollutions in a local level. These are different ideas comes to mind. As an incubator, we work on it. As an incubator or innovators, we engage our inquities or the startups or the innovators. Now, it has said to 60 odd companies you promoted, just you want to understand some of them are really BTEC students, past only BTEC, no more degrees, master students, PhD scholars building the companies. Of course, all of them cannot succeed. I don't say they failed, they didn't succeed, but they might succeed in the you know, other concepts. Many of them couldn't succeed. That is quite normal in this startup ecosystem. But the best part, I feel that these startup companies, which came with very simple ideas with one member, two member, today, some of them become really big. And these startups have raised 1,200 crores rupees from the market. It means investment from the private sectors, not from the government sector. Initially, government helps you to build your ideas into enterprise, but it goes to a level, then they you will need to really go to the next level to get private investment funding. This company have raised 1200 crores, which is not small. This is really I'm an encouraging figure. And this company have already become the valuation of this company have become more than 8,000 crores, which is also very, very encouraging. So this is what, you know, the most interesting slide I feel, this company have created more than 4,500 direct jobs in technical sectors, biotech, whatever, renewable energy, engineering, I feel so happy that this ecosystem has created more than 5,000, 4,500 jobs. Why I'm saying, because we are responsible citizen of India. Some of us become innovators, become entrepreneurs. And then if you create even 10 jobs, that's the biggest thing you are contributing for the India because creating jobs is one of the exciting part I feel is a part of technical person. 
Now, apart from, of course, apart from that, we promote more IPs, more recognitions, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, there are 70 plus women-led startups. So think about many of you, those who are ladies, don't underestimate, you can be the next torch period of startup creation. Many of our startups are really successful are also women. We're in all sectors from healthcare to FinTech, edutech to agriculture, diagnostics, because we are very popular in the country at the moment. And our annual turnover of the only incubator is close to 37 crores. So these innovators, ideas all come in different stages, ideas and stages. So they go for fellowship, proof of concept they want to build, they go for different grants, then they go validation, then commerce lessons. So we really work with them at the very early stage of ideas and stage to commerce lesson stage. That's why we're very, very popular in the country. Now, just to give you one example, this first company, which will be you know, really exciting for you, first students was doing MTech in Biotech in NIT Raurkula. We went on a you know, workshop. So that was, I always go for a purpose in a workshop. So I could find out this person has a lot of potential. So during discussion, I realized he has interesting ideas, but needs further refinement. But his professor was not so good to define those things. We brought him, we funded him through a fellowship program, prototyping grant program. This guy has developed, a material science guy has developed the fastest blood clotting reagent, which is six times better than today's the world's best clotting reagent. This has gone to a level where he's got money, he's got investment, little money. He got the Defense Innovation Award. He got, you know, so Indian Army wanted to do trial now. Now, this student has got 50 lakhs grant, 70 lakhs grant, and got some you know, investment money going next to next level because this is a very, you know, what do you call trial compliance, regulatory compliance product. It will take some time. So look, one student of MTech creating the enterprise, the world's fastest blood clotting reagent, and went to Israel, won the Israel Master Lage Award, which is quite prestigious. And the only one so far from India is, you know, is received. There's one company called very popular in the moment, Cygenica Private Limited, which is developing a, you know, what do you call a molecular screws, a molecular peptides platform, which is called the drug delivery system. Now these peptides behave as screws, gets into specific cells and release the drug, which is loaded in that you know, platform and gets dissolved. It's a very targeted drug delivery system. The lady was a PhD and the postdoc from Kyoto from Japan, came for a faculty, we talked to her, we said, see, you can be a faculty tomorrow also, but today let's try on this innovation. Today, she remembers us because she could start her journey from a little idea, which she could do in a research. Now today she has really raised good amount of money and going further and further. If this company to watch out, if this succeeds the company, I'm sure Novartis or Pfizer is going to put maybe 5,000 crores on this company to build a new regime of drug delivery which is really, which will be exciting. Look, students like a student from Niger with whom we have been just like I'm talking to you today, I've been talking to Niger Bhubaneswar student, master students, listen, she came to us and with her idea, we refined the idea. She used our prototyping facility, built the prototype, did the trial with Department of Agriculture, got a lot of money, support, everything is happening now. So she's building up a very small device which can test the fertility part of soil, N, P, K, P, H, and I think something else. So five parameters she has been using, she has been detecting, which is quite good. On the spot, you can look at the soil fertility without you know, uh, taking much of time. This is quite good. So we talked to somebody and this is still validation phase, uh, approval certification phase. If it gets cleared, then the first order will come 10,000 pieces. This is called the power of innovations ideas. You can really build it up. This is one interesting idea because many of you might be from botany and in other fields. So you have got silk is colored and to color silk, it takes a lot of water, a lot of toxic chemicals and all. Now look here, somebody has built the new method to make the cocoon of the silk colored before it's naturally colored. And that's what the, you know, the industry wants. If this happens, then a the lot of this water pollution, the discharge-based pollutions will be stopped. Now, this is getting popular now, um, uh, but still under in the commercial stage. Just very young fellows, they've been doing it. 1090 also IIT, you know, uh, I think uh, from IIT Chennai. So they also build, build this uh, small phase transition material. 
in which if you put anything, it will maintain the temperature for four to 10 degrees centigrade for some six to eight hours for logistic support in agricultural commodities. Also very interesting product to watch out. Now I'm saying all these things, but you might ask questions, sir, I would have gone for a PhD postdoc, take up a job faculty, a job is secured, I'm fine. Look, the first company I said, Far I, which you see today, the Far I BTEC students, three of them from KIT, first company of us, where we took them without knowing much of robotics. The company today has become 8,000 crores company called Far, you can Google them. They've raised more than 1,050 crores rupees from the market. Did they really won several you know, awards, including Oscar in logistics, and three BTEC students now agrees to this level. All matters is the best idea, good ideas. How do you build a team? How do you strategize? Who are your mentors? Everything is important for you. So this company where we have helped them put a little money, we also got money back from them. So to the faculty, to the principal of Hansaraj College, the vice principal, or to the, the innovation council you know, department head, that if you really work with your startups in-house in Hansaraj or in other places, if you little help them put money, little money of seed fund, you never know. Some of the money can go to a bigger one where you can build bigger laboratories for you. Like this company, like Presar, I serve you. I serve you also raised good about 60 crores of rupees. In your cool, as there's everywhere we have got money, got quadruple four times, three times, 2.5 times, which is very, very encouraging. So when you do this kind of innovation entrepreneurship, not only the startup gets benefited, the center which promotes these startups also get benefited immensely. Maybe later on, uh, Mr. Muthu will talk about it. Similarly, you see here uh, different companies who have really raised investment funds, which I just talked about, you know, uh, this, you know, very last slide. So this is, you know, this is very, very encouraging. The company which are really doing good, ideation level to next level, they could really raise funding from investment funding from outside. And they have grown from a simple ideas. Now they have, raised, they have raised 1,050 crores to market. Of course, everybody cannot do it, but many of you can, some of you can do it. I'm quite sure about it. And what I'm saying today is not because, you know, I have done it. My team is quite big. Look how startups are so smiling. They have been awarded, rewarded everywhere. They're young children, young students, their faculties, their scientists, everybody is into it. People getting award from the ministers, the Defense Innovation Award from Sudha Murtiji, Startup Challenge Award, you know, uh, India this Growth Program, IIGP awards everywhere, including in Israel, in Japan, in US, everywhere they've been awarded. So I thought, tell you that, don't underestimate your, you know, that I'm a student. Look at these two girls, very young age. They are now getting good traction. They also featured in Forbes 30 now and they got you know, good grants. They're making organic batteries out of agriculture residues. Simple ideas. Once to, you, know, you have to take them to next level and they're all at KTBI and you know, working, you know, uh, building some enterprise out of here. Look at this company called Azurex, really built a device which can detect six blood parameters without taking a drop of blood in less than 20 seconds. Became really big viral we, of course, we took the engine in the company because mankind pharma has put the money, but this is a, you know, he's a simple engineer, IT engineer building such enterprise. Think of it. And I, what I said, I'm not the one. Uh, so once you do good work, you really been awarded at every stage, our startups getting awarded. We have been awarded the best year of the country award. So we are really well recognized in the country at the moment. And I'm talking on behalf of my team. I have almost 60 members team in the incubation center which I feel it is one of the largest incubator in the university ecosystem and that too in Odessa. So I thought I'll speak from both angles, incubators, incubator perspective. And if you build a path, and I think this will be quite, quite encouraging for you, please think, uh, always people say, think out of the box. I, I always say, at least start thinking. Many of us, we do not think at all. We have a very monotonous life to you know, go to the classroom, learn something, come back, write exams. But this, by doing this, you can be really rewarded. So satisfying for me to create so many jobs in Bhubaneswar areas. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for patient listening. I hope I did the justice because it was too, not too much for you. You can uh, ask any questions if you have. I had asked for 45 minutes. Job is done. Thank you.
Uh, indeed, great job done. I, I have always been so inspired by your achievement, but did not get a chance to listen to you live. But I, I think that the day has come and I'm really fortunate and everything, everyone uh, who is listening today is fortunate. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I feel that uh, by your ideas, like just a simple idea, you can just kickstart your career. It's a simple idea. So, and it will be touching muscles that we can have apart from just going to higher education or to a competitive exam or to a job. There's another fourth uh, uh, dimension that is the entrepreneurship or innovation. I just give you an example, Jaya. You know, sometimes I get ideas. One of my students, he saw here, we have a Chilika Lake, maybe it's famous. I think you were here, I don't know. Chilika Lake is quite famous here. It's a brackish water lagoon. And the lagoon, so here all bought me biotech students, they went for a trip. And one student identified the Chilika Lake is shrinking because the, the weed species is invasive species getting in the Chilika Lake now in 160 odd square kilometer. It's a threat to the Chilika Lake. It's, you know, everybody is, you know, uh, government is putting a lot of stress on this. One of my students during master's level, I remember his name. Uh, so uh, he, uh, Anurag Kya, so he got an idea uh, with one, you know, of course, he's my better half, uh, Dr. Bisaka Raina, you know her and worked in the laboratory, I mentored him. And this guy went to Stanford during degree and got good money out of there because he got a better PhD because of the idea. So I'm telling all of you, you don't have to build enterprise. If you're creative, if you're innovative, you're thinking towards that direction. If you get a PhD, it will be much more different type of PhD, not very classical PhD program. It will be more of translational PhD program. And that's sort of my message to all of you that think differently, build a new culture in Hansaraj College, both for faculties and for students, that your experiments has to be different kind for a purpose, for a defined outcome, right? Thank you, sorry. Uh, no, 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 absolutely. So it's always a delight. Uh, and I, I it give me a sense of pride that we hail from the same lab. Uh, yeah. Now I invite uh, Dr. Archana Singh to please convey a vote of thanks to sir. Thank you, Jaya. On behalf of the entire team of IIC HRC, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our speaker, Dr. Mithunjay Swar. Thank you, sir, for accepting our request and sparing time from your busy schedule and joining us to de deliver this motivational talk. You talked about how to convert idea into enterprise. You talked about innovation, idea, proof of concepts, technology transfer, startups, validation, marketing, business plan. Uh, if it is health related innovation, there are clinical trials, which, which is involved. So, and then you also talked about many of the success stories from KIIT and other institutions which, uh, to, to which you are a part of. So it was highly informative and inspirational. Uh, uh, most of the students think that they may have an idea, they may, have a crea they may be creative, but they don't know from where they can get the fund. So you have uh, given us, you have given all the participant, participants a list of funding agency who can also fund their, uh, you know, uh, their idea to get converted into enterprise. So it was highly uh, motivational and informative for the, uh, all the participants, I'm sure, that they are going to get benefited out of it. And now they're not, they are going to reveal their idea to everyone uh, to whos uh, or uh, to whomsoever they trust so that they can help help them to convert it into an enterprise. Thank you very much, sir. And I would Thank also you. like to tell you right here that I have monitored many of the achievements of KIIT Incubator Center on social media, and uh, you are the man behind th those achievements. So uh, you are definitely an inspiring person for all of us. And uh, moreover, you. you are an alumni, alumni of Delhi University. So we have a special connect definitely with you and we are really very proud of you. Thank you. At the thank same you, time, you. I'd also like to thank our principal and president of IIC, our vice president, uh, Ms. Alka Kakar, and uh, Dr. Madhavi, uh, who is a startup coordinator activity for, uh, she is a coordinator for startup activity from IIC uh, for their help, support, and encouragement during organization of this event. Special thanks to Dr. Jaya and Dr. Lebin for organizing this event very efficiently. I would also like to uh, convey my sincere thanks to the students and the support staff, Mr. Amit Chauhan and Mr. Gaurav, 
for making best arrangement of this program wholeheartedly most importantly we are grateful to all the participants for their active participation thank you very much sir for uh, giving your uh, uh, valuable time to us and to our students thank you sir thank you thank you everybody thank you jay thank you. Uh, now I invite Mr. Shashwat Pathak from MIT to please continue with the program. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, uh, Muthu sir is uh, having some busyness with the IKP uh, today, and I think uh, his teammate uh, Harshini is there. Harshini, can you please take over? Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, since Muthu sir is not here, I'm uh, behalf of uh, I'm here on behalf of HTIC. So, just giving you all a brief introduction about HTIC. We are called the Healthcare Technology Innovation Center. Uh, we are a joint initiative of IIT Madras and Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Uh, so, we are supported by Bayrak under the Bayna scheme. We have uh, various uh, programs that are supported here. We have two wings. One is the research and the other one is the incubator. And in the incubator, we have a few programs like the pre-incubation program, the incubation program. And we also have various uh, funding programs, which includes the Nidhi Prayas, uh, Nidhi the EIR fellowship program, we have the Sparge fellowship program, and we also have the Kavich program. So, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Mithyun Jay has uh, already given you all a brief introduction about uh, all these programs. So, to know more about these uh, details, you all can uh, visit the HDIC website where you uh, you'll can find uh, the link also to apply for it. So, uh, with no further delay, moving on to uh, the introduction, uh, Dr. Shashwat, can you start with it? Sure. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, uh, Today we have with us for the panel discussion, uh, Mr. Shanta Kumar and uh, Mr. Palani Appan Narayanan. So giving a short introduction about them, uh, Mr. Shanta Kumar is a co-founder and director of Cornerstone Devices Private Limited. As an effective uh, and result focused executive, Shanta Kumar sir has over 33 years of experience in the healthcare industry. He has led multiple companies to success in terms of organization, wide growth in uh, sales, marketing, service, support, uh, production and uh, design and development. Additionally, he has managed technology transfers, product or patent or tech licensing, clinical validations, grants, and early stage funding. He has strong expertise in developing new business opportunities and leading teams to achieve exceptional results. He has significant experience in the Southeast Asia region and uh, extensive connect with manufacturers across the globe. Uh, he is currently focused on developing and managing two companies in the healthcare domain, uh, which includes uh, Vital Biosystems Private Limited, a medical equipment distribution and training company, and also Cornerstone Devices Private Limited, a startup in the radiology segment. He is also involved in uh, training and mentoring biomedical engineers and uh, startups regularly. Happy to have you with us, sir. So uh, going to the introduction of uh, Mr. Palniyappan Narayanan, he is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Mozero Health Solutions Private Limited. He has been the head of digital payment and initiatives in uh, Maastricht Bank and also has been the assistant vice president in card acquiring. He has managed the e-commerce, mobile POS and all alternate uh, payment acceptance for the Maastricht Bank and also has managed the P&L for uh, the acquiring unit. Created the merchant level profitability for uh, over 6,000 merchants, created profitability linked incentive structure, and he has also created the first ever profitability linked incentive uh, structure for acquiring sales team, pushing for uh, achieving profitable sales uh, rather than by uh, volume or number of POS missions or MID. He is currently working on building and uh, prototype, uh, prototyping yoursugar.com. And I'm also uh, happy to say that uh, they, uh, they were incubated at HDIC and now they have uh, successfully uh, graduated and moving into the commercialization role. Happy to have you with us. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Harshini, uh, for the introduction. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, th uh, thank you, Mr. Shashwat, for providing us the opportunity and uh, a platform to share the experience. Uh, so, uh, I mean, being an incubation program and addressing uh, a group of students looking towards startup or ideas, uh, we just thought we'd share our experiences of our journey over the last few years. Uh, hi, uh, Shantakumar sir for uh, I mean, uh, joining uh, us in the conversation as well. Uh, so uh, now, uh, as, as uh, spoken by uh, uh, sir earlier, uh, see incubation uh, has been quite a, a supportive environment or a pathway for a lot of startups to build. Now, Mozero Health Solution, as Sir mentioned towards the end of his speech, 
uh, we walked in all alone as a single member and today we are a team of about 35 people it's a four year journey uh, been through the uh, um, uh, struggles of uh, uh, the uh, startup process right from identifying the idea identifying the market uh, uh, going through the commercialization phase identifying resources uh, it's, it's been quite a journey and incubation has been really supportive during this entire process. Uh, so we walked in with a simple idea for a diabetes management platform. Uh, over the last two, three years of the incubation process, uh, uh, the, the HDIC played a major role in terms of uh, the support ecosystem connections that it makes to industry experts, the uh, avenues to talk to uh, people needed mentors. Uh, the ecosystem that provided has helped Mozero survive the first three years of identifying the product and uh, the roadmap and the vision for the company. So during that phase, the incubation was really a, a, a benefit during the uh, 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 during the journey uh, so far for us. Uh, we are still based out of the IIT Madras Research Park ecosystem. Uh, and incubation still supports us by providing uh, space at a subsidized price and all that. So both monetary connection, identifying markets, helping through pivots in your product, uh, uh, being part of the incubation program has really uh, helped us. Uh, sir, uh, on that flow, uh, now you uh, have been a, a serial entrepreneur for about uh, th uh, 30 years now. And this is probably a sixth or seventh company. So uh, after starting up multiple companies, going through the rigor, understanding all that, uh, how has incubation played a role in Cornerstone? Uh, that's one of your last, uh, 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 I mean, one of your uh, later startups. So you had the experience of uh, starting, scaling multiple companies and why did you choose incubation? Uh, for one of the later startups. Yeah, thank you, Paul Nepen. And uh, uh, before I uh, proceed, I just want to thank uh, the entire team which has uh, invited us to be on this platform. I think it's the second time that uh, we are, uh, you know, on, on a on a platform where uh, you know most of uh, the participants have been uh, have seen us. So uh, glad to be back. Uh, yes, uh, Paul Nepen, I think. Um, uh, for me, the entrepreneurial journey was uh, even longer. Uh, so though my uh, professional experience uh, started about 32 years back, uh, my first uh, first business actually happened when I was uh, just out of school. So the cornerstone uh, cornerstone devices was is actually my ninth uh, yeah. uh, you know company. So. <laughs> Uh, and of course, ninth is the uh, one that uh, we uh, went through the incubation uh, process, uh, mainly because the earlier ones, uh, we didn't even have a concept of uh, what entrepreneurship is uh, today. Uh, the, the ecosystem and the words that we used were completely different. Uh, so we actually started looking at uh, value in an incubation system and uh, going through the whole process uh, only when we started Cornerstone Devices, which was in 2017. Um, so very quickly, I just want to uh, uh, suggest a few points of why incubation. Uh, first of all, uh, being incubated in uh, an organization like HTIC or IIT Madras uh, enhances the brand uh, of Cornerstone, of the company that uh, is the incubating uh, because uh, people also understand that there is a vetting process and you know the selection didn't just happen like that you know it, it, it you there is value which is why you are part of uh, an incubator like uh, HTIC so that is one of the things the other thing is uh, you know once we uh, uh, got in we also found that there are a lot of uh, value adds by with with a um, uh, lot of seminars webinars uh, so a lot of knowledge uh, is disseminated uh, in and through the uh, incubator. Um, so early stage when we applied for a grant with uh, Bayrak, we applied at 
for the IAPME seed fund. Uh, uh, HTIC was extremely uh, helpful. In fact, uh, for our first meeting at uh, Bayrak, uh, Muthu was uh, with us. And uh, for us, that was a huge uh, leg up. So things like that really helped us. And having been incubated in uh, HTIC also helped in, uh, uh, in the credibility of the company. So the grant process also, I think, got, uh, was much uh, easier. And of course, all the additional uh, things like networks, connects, uh, right from customers, potential customers, vendors, uh, and even the industry connects were all uh, made through the incubator. Okay. So that's quite interesting because, uh, I mean, the, uh, for us being a first time startup, uh, uh, the role that the incubator played was very different. And for you as, as a experienced uh, uh, person who, who's ninth venture and still incubation had a lot of uh, uh, value to add. Uh, so again, like uh, getting on into uh, say the mindset of uh, starting up and mindset of building enterprise and business. Uh, some things that uh, Mr. Mutranjay, uh, Dr. Mutranjay had mentioned. Uh, so in this uh, startup, there is always this uh, thing, especially during the incubation phase, it's like fail fast, uh, try fast, identify the bad ideas, um, kind of uh, eliminate the bad ideas and it's better to fail fast is, is, is a, a, a more of a statement that's there in the startup ecosystem. Uh, are, are you a believer of this? Uh, try fast, fail fast uh, philosophy to uh, uh, say an enterprise building or uh, do you think uh, reiterating, validating ideas take time and you need to really nurture uh, uh, an enterprise? What's your thought on this, sir? Yeah, I think uh, uh, fail fast or fail forward or fail better is... Um, uh, I think it's it's also a play on words. I would uh, I would have worded it differently if uh, I were to actually uh, sort of uh, leverage the meaning. Uh, it's more about uh, being open to change, uh, being able to pivot, uh, being able to uh, accept uh, that there might be something that needs change in your process or your product or the, uh, or the, or the strategy. Um, so it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you are absolved of your uh, responsibility towards driving your company. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so uh, I think that, that that's also key because uh, I've seen uh, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, entrepreneurs who uh, say, okay, this, I tried it. Uh, but I would rather exit now than, you know, uh, do it later when, and then, you know, I, I build uh, much more uh, and I, uh, my, my burn rate is higher and, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into debt, all those kind of things. So uh, we're not talking about that. We are talking about being willing to make changes, being willing to uh, pivot, being willing to accept uh, uh, changes or even I would even say advice which is uh, filtered right with and you know tempered with wisdom so I think that that's more important so uh, so entrepreneurship is not uh, uh, for those who want to make it very quickly I mean it is about uh, grit it's about uh, staying power it's about determined uh, effort it's about hard work um, so all these things about hey, I, I uh, built a company, scaled it up in one year, and all that might be true of uh, a few, but for uh, the average uh, startup, I don't think that uh, you know having this uh, idea that you know either make it or not make it within the next uh, six months is not a great uh, uh, way to uh, think through your uh, your, uh, your your company. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, I mean, frank, uh, uh, practically my personal experiences, uh, it's been four years and I think uh, it's, it's only the last one year, like we've got some kind of traction. Uh, 
the first two or three years uh, in in an uh, entrepreneur uh, in the entrepreneur journey is about identifying resources. Now, as a as a company which is starting up for the first time, uh, uh, setting up the hiring channels, setting up your uh, identifying your uh, 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 sales channels or uh, identifying your customers and then identifying the sales channel. Uh, I think it took us about two, two and a half years, three years to identify what we are doing, whom we are selling to, what is our uniqueness in the market, what is our product, and how do I get, uh, uh, say, people to make that product. Uh, took me about two, two and a half years or three years. And it's, it's only the last years I've got bits and pieces of these settled down. Uh, so really, uh, and entrepreneurship. Now, with resources, obviously, that could be fast track. Uh, with investments and stuff, that could be fast track. Uh, but really, a lot of companies, even after investment, are still trying to identify what is the market, how do you have a better uh, sales channels and all that. Uh, so, so my thought is like, typically in this fail fast thing, it's, it's more pivots. Uh, uh, so, or ideas that you want to discard or ideas that you find work better uh, to, to be more practical than uh, anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in, in that particular case, so what would your advice to student entrepreneurs be? Now, what should be their timeline? So should they say, okay, let me take a risk for two years, try something out, uh, and, and then probably if things don't work out, I can always end up with a job. Uh, what would your advice to student entrepreneurs be? Yeah, I uh, see entrepreneurship is like uh, jumping into the swimming pool in the deep end. So uh, if you are looking to uh, uh, to be uh, tethered to something that you're not even... Uh, slightly uh, a rosy word. Uh, it's jumping into this ocean. <laughs> between yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you cannot have one foot on the shore and one foot in the sea uh, because you'll not get very far, right? So that's, yeah. I think that's that's very important for us to understand that, you know, uh, so so let me rewind a little bit and say, okay, now what is it about your idea uh, that you believe in? So if you uh, are fully uh, engrossed with your idea, so you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about your idea, you're thinking about your product, you're thinking about the, 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 uh, the, the way it is going to work, right? You're thinking about your company, you're, going to, you're, you're thinking about it. So uh, you are you are fully bought in. Uh, you are a believer in your product. You are a believer in your company, uh, which means that you know you are all in. You cannot be uh, even setting a timeline for when you are going to exit if things go south. So it is important for you to. Uh, so that also validates the fact that this is uh, this is a really really good idea. Uh, or a really good product which is going to work. So if you yourself don't believe in your product, then it's going to fail 100%. Uh, so if you believe in your idea, then why are you looking for a safe haven? Uh, so that, that is what I would say. I would say be all in. And uh, you must also understand that uh, while you're all in and you are saying that, you know, I'm not looking for a life code or I'm not looking to put one foot in the uh, show, uh, but you also need to be uh, very clear what your runway is, at what time you need what funding, uh, because these are all part of the strategy. These are all part of the process of uh, uh, running the uh, startup. Uh, so uh, never ever uh, start raising funds when you are at the end of your uh, you know runway. So think this through, but uh, it's important that you plan uh, your plan is not to fail, but if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail, right? So it's important for you to plan well, but at the same time, believe in your product, believe in your company, believe that you're going to be successful. Otherwise, that will straight away get uh, translated to everybody that you talk to, even your employees, your uh, investors, your incubator, everywhere. Uh, so I would say uh, don't even set timelines. Uh, instead, if you really believe in your product, uh, go for it. Uh, be fully sold to what you do. Absolutely. Uh, see, I, I, I mean, I think I agree with a couple of points. Entrepreneurship is about uh, 
it's a lifestyle. So once you jump in, uh, you'll have to stay invested. Uh, that's that's a very valid thing. Uh, what would you say to experienced entrepreneurs? So, uh, I mean, just like Dr. Mrityanjay mentioned, a lot of professors have technology uh, advantage and they want to do tech transfers. So how do you think those kind of uh, uh, enterprises need to be built? Uh, what would your advice be? Uh, uh, I mean, student entrepreneurs, that's probably a different angle of it. But what about experienced professors who have uh, knowledge of uh, a great technology? Uh, 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 how, how do you think they should approach entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, because it then takes us back to the earlier question of are you willing to pivot? Or are you willing to, uh, for a lack of better word, uh, fail fast? It's, so it's not fail fast. It's about change, changing your strategy, changing your plan. So I, uh, let me put it this way. I think um, it's always important for uh, every entrepreneur to uh, plan to put the product into the market. Okay. So when there is a, a fantastic opportunity to do a tech transfer, uh, go for it. But you are planning to uh, get market traction. You are going to. You are planning to. Uh, you know, put the product into the market. You are planning to scale up. Now that should be the plan for anyone, uh, because then you start thinking like an entrepreneur. Then you start thinking commercial. Uh, if if you are already if you have already made up your mind that you are only going to do a tech transfer, uh, you may not have thought through the entire uh, process. Absolutely. of uh, how uh, uh, a company would run and how it would uh, uh, monetize the product. Uh, so when you think through and uh, plan to put the product to the market, get traction, uh, you know, build and then scale up, when you have the whole gamut, when you have the roadmap for the whole gam uh, the, the whole end-to-end uh, -end, uh, roadmap, then when you have an opportunity, you can always look at uh, doing a tech transfer uh, mm -hmm. and get better value for the tech transfer that you do because you know exactly what the value uh, or the valuation of the company would be uh, based on your uh, roadmap for your company. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, uh, uh, see, uh, one thing about uh, commercialization, because having a technology and then identifying commercialization routes, business models, is a is a very tricky and a tedious job. Uh, I mean, uh, but but then that's a head start with a product. You have to just look at the uh, commercialization models. Now, coming into the commercialization journey, uh, so what would you? How would you uh, give a weightage between product building and commercialization? Uh, so uh, now now if a company has got to be successful. Uh, you need to concentrate both on the product building. Uh, when I say product building, it could be a new technology, new product, uh, hardware, anything of that sort, uh, and uh, commercialization. Because if, if you're building something that's new to market, now addressing uh, an incubation center, it's, we presume that it's it's a new idea, new to market product. Uh, so as a start, as, as an entrepreneur who's, who's being incubated, how much focus should it be on product building and commercialization and how should this ratio change uh, during the course of the uh, uh, company's growth? Uh, any thoughts into that, sir? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, what HTIC, for example, does now is uh, there is a, a vetting of the uh, uh, a proof of concept, then there is a clinical immersion, then there is a five-week customer discovery program and, and so on. So in that process, within about two, three months, you have already done the fundamental studies that are required uh, to build your business plan. Uh, so that's an initial uh, validation of the uh, idea itself. So from there, the next step is to build your product. So when you build your product, you're going to uh, validate and revalidate, get market inputs and, you know, so there is a lot of iteration, but uh, my suggestion would be once you have uh, uh, iterated it four or five times, and even if only 70% of your customers 
uh, say that you know this is perfect and the rest 30 say you should add this or take this off uh, that's still okay you you'll need to get uh, to the market at some point of time so if you keep on uh, uh, iterating then you will not uh, you will never get to the commercial uh, aspect uh, commercialization so it's important to uh, come to a very um, uh, you know thought through uh, you know uh, closure of the first iteration you can always keep adding later a different model later a different model later uh, but you need to put the product into the market once you know that you know 60 or 70 percent of the customers are uh, willing to uh, take this as the specification and uh, then you are going all out so actually while even while you're validating the product you are talking to uh, you know the key opinion leaders you're talking to the customers so you're already building a network you're already building trust you're already uh, getting your brand recognized you are getting your product uh, recognized so this, these are all uh, initial marketing activities uh, even while you're doing the validation uh, so the next one is to do the grind and just go all out uh, in sales. So commercialize the product, uh, keep your product closer in geography so that you can address uh, issues if there are any, if that's your first iteration. And uh, make sure that you don't uh, chew more than, you know, bite more than you can chew. Uh, that's, I'm talking about the initial, uh, you know, pre-pilot, you know, pilot uh, lots. Uh, even the initial production, if it is technology. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, once the concept is proved itself, uh, you know, go all out and scale. Absolutely. Uh, sir, so, I mean, it was a fantastic uh, chat having with you on understanding uh, the uh, mindset for startups uh, or, or, or mindset for uh, uh, startup founders, how they should approach a company uh, uh, commercialization and all. Uh, uh, so uh, probably uh, should we open it up for questions from audience if there are any uh, in these areas, any personal questions on the scale up startup journey, uh, we'd be happy to take it. Uh, any questions you can probably raise your hand or uh, post them on the uh, uh, group uh, or any other questions, uh, Shashwat sir, you wanted us to address, we'd be happy to do it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pariyappan sir and Shanta sir. And it was actually a very nice opportunity to host you again over this platform. Last time we did it on the lecture series. And uh, it is actually quite amazing. And today's program has been designed in a way that uh, the incubators first uh, share that what is their projected overview how the ecosystem actually looks like, how this ecosystem, what are different stakeholders, what are different uh, schemes which are being designed to actually help uh, this foster with this spirit of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. And then next followed by both of you, uh, who are the beneficiary of this ecosystem and who are setting this, setting up this example. So uh, one question from my side, I would like to ask that, uh, uh, did you ever feel some kind of uh, uh, privileged feeling when going for some scheme being uh, associated with an incubator, a uh, renowned incubator, and applying to it uh, when you are not having that incubation support? Uh, so you want to take that up? Uh, sorry, again, uh, can, can, can you... Uh, uh... So yeah, that, sir, uh, I, I wanted to ask that what is actually, uh, 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 I think the participants will need to understand that what is the role of incubators, uh, like uh, uh, if, if somebody enters to these schemes, these uh, uh, support fundings without incubation support and with incubation support. So what is uh, a different edge you get being incubated from an incubator? Um, actually, I'm not sure if um, I have an example of uh, not being incubated and getting funded by a government agency because uh, when we uh, went for the uh, BIRAC grant, we had already got an incubation letter from STIC. So I, so I would say that it's easier uh, because, uh, you know, uh, BIRAC is also, sort of, uh, you know, funding uh, 
uh, the incubator. Uh, so there is already a two-stage process of evaluation that has happened. Uh, so it makes it much easier. Uh, so that is certainly uh, the case. And then uh, in I can uh, talk about another uh, company which uh, I have been mentoring who have not been incubated. Uh, it is a little bit uh, difficult, you know, the, they had a great idea, uh, but I think uh, having an association with an incubator like uh, HTIC actually has, uh, you know, the value uh, because then your, uh, you know, your brand of uh, your company also is uh, sort of lifted up, up a little bit. Uh, so I would say that, you know, it's important to uh, get incubated, especially for uh, uh, young entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, it uh, gives you an ecosystem. Like, for example, Alinepen and I would have not known each other if we were not in the same incubator. Uh, I have at least uh, another seven or eight uh, uh, people from the same batch of uh, incubator uh, that I'm still in touch with. And uh, many times I am called for certain, some programs or I am called to mentor somebody. Uh, similarly, you know, I take help from somebody and uh, somebody else takes my help. Uh, I'll just give you one classic example. Uh, while I was doing this, this uh, uh, five-week uh, uh, program, uh, one of the uh, pre-incubators, they, uh, they had a, a great uh, product, which was um, a surgical smoke uh, evacuator. And, uh, you know, they didn't know how to market the product. You know, they were going to the wrong people. So uh, when I uh, was starting to mentor them, I said, hey, I already know people who are uh, distributors of uh, uh, electrosurgical units. So for them, it is just an add-on product, right? So, so this kind of network happens. In fact, for them, it was just a cake. I spoke to the distributor, they spoke to him, and the, uh, you know, deal was sealed. And uh, they, they already bought a demo unit. They started uh, you know, populating it in, uh, in Karnataka. So this kind of uh, additional uh, you know, network and uh, this kind of ecosystem where you know, we can uh, help each other and uh, you know, uh, support each other is uh, truly uh, useful. I would say that it's a, it's a great uh, uh, time to be an entrepreneur, this, this period of time that we are in. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, participants, if you want to ask any question, you can directly post it in question and answer section. Or you can uh, raise your hands. The organizers will actually help you. Thank you so much. Sir, if there are any questions, we will uh, direct it to you. Definitely. And uh, uh, I, I thank Team STIC for uh, actually coming up and sharing their experience and the way this uh, program was planned this was executed and uh, i'm very thankful to our two startups the startup founders uh, uh, shanta sir and nepal sir and uh, i thank uh, harshini uh, so that she could organize the things together and uh, i'm very thankful to hansaj college for uh, organizing this event hosting with us and uh, uh, I, I thank the whole organizing team. Uh, team uh, includes the Hans Raj College, MIT Bayrat, BMU Mundial University, and uh, Terry School of Advanced Studies as, as well as IAST. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, having a joint venture. It was a, it was a good effort from all of us. Thank you. Hello, Jaya, are you there? I have switched Hello. off the recording. Recording. Oh. I think okay. because I could not see uh, this uh, Gaurav here in the panelists. Yeah, so. Gaurav is not there. He has made me host. He called me for that. Okay, so, so after. Okay, okay, no problem. Should so I end after... the meeting? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I hope the recording will go to their end. 
we do not have to do anything in yes, this yes and uh, we ha- we can also uh, take the recording link like i have sent you facebook link no yeah 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 that i have received mm-hmm. uh, okay okay yeah. so you can uh, end the meeting thank you so much ma'am. okay 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 thank you lebin so lebin you must be having some geo tag pictures which you can share with jaya and me as well okay thanks ma'am okay i also thank have you, taken lebin. three thanks, four pictures jaya. thank you ma'am okay. thank you lebin bye 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 bye